What's going on guys? Hoops here with uh, the third video for the camper trailer build. I don't have much time today, so it's only going to be a short video because I'm getting ready to go to a um, a big trip up to Shark Bay for a, for two weeks fishing with my brother. So that's going to be uh, pretty epic. So if you're into fishing, you're going to wait for that video to come out. It should be pretty epic uh, if it isn't already. <clears throat> Right, so I've got the tedious task I did yesterday. What did we do? We um, grinded it a fair bit back. We welded in those guards and we gave it a bit of a paint job. Um, I was going to do it underneath, but I don't have any buddies here with me today to um, help me flip this over. So I'm going to get on to um, doing some other things. What I'm thinking of doing is I want to start getting that uh, frame framework done. Um, the upright. So I've welded them already. Um, which I did in the first episode and showed you, but what I want to do is try and uh, just grind it all back, clean it all up, clean the welds up. Probably, yeah, we'll prime it. Um, and then I want to try and just mock it up in place. I've got it sitting up on there at the moment with some clamps just to show you, but yeah, just mock it up into place and maybe make some support brackets and yeah, we're just, just winging it. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Um, anything else? So I have been playing with um, a program called Tinker Tinker CAD, and I've designed the camper trailer uh, as best as I could on that app, app which is bloody frustrating. Um, but yeah, I have designed it, so I'll show you now what that looks like. So this is the trailer that I've designed. It's just, um, like I said, on Tinker Cat, so it's pretty hard to do. But <clears throat> just basically showing you all the doors, how they all fold up. Um, how I've designed the trailer, the frame underneath, and like that, and sort of a set out of where it is. The, the table slides out, the uh, fridge on the top there, the solar panel, rooftop tent. Uh, just giving you a bit of a rundown. Um, so at the front over here, we've got the water tank, which you'll see at the front there, and the toolbox that I've designed. So that way it'd be uh, pretty handy to have at the front there. Plus the jerry cans will be above or on the front there too. Um, but we've also got this hot water system which I'm going to mount behind there. And this side will be the shower shower side. I'm thinking maybe just changing this is the microwave recess that I'm going to build. We might chuck it in the middle sort of thing above the actual um, table. Just so that way it's pretty much right, right above the table so we can cook. And then you can just stuff stuff in from the... Um, yeah, in the microwave and also on the right hand side of the microwave you'll see the telly as well the telly will be swiveled out so it'll be near the cooker but yeah it's just um just a quick one you see the little dropper legs at the back as well which i've um gonna create right so yeah that's what that's what the uh the camper rough design will be and like i said it's on tinkercad so it's not exactly perfect and you'll see when it gets built but it's going to be pretty cool so yeah i think we should pretty much get it into the bloody dog and try and get this wrapped up and get a bit more work done today and see how much we can get done. I've got about four hours, so coffee, get into it. All right, here we go. So this is this is what just, uh, just clamped on there. It needs to be leveled off and everything like that. What I'm going to do is, yeah, take it off, clean all that up, prime it so it's all nice and tidy, same as that one in the background. We'll uh, do the exact same thing. Uh, what I want to do is basically from here back to the mud guard. Let's use this uh, up that way. Weld, weld something like that on there, and then I'll probably have an upright going straight down to the guard there as well, maybe. And then yeah, same deal from here to there. Um, that'll give it a bit of support. Be able to force weld it to the guard as well. And that'll give it a bit more um, weight, uh, yeah, support. And what I was thinking is for the weight distribution was just to have one coming down here and spread out the load a bit more with the rooftop on. But we will have bracings. Uh, yeah, I think maybe it might be all right. I don't know. I'm just winging it at the moment. So we'll see how that goes. But you never know. We might end up doing that. But yeah, that is what I'm going to do is, is clean these down, get them in some primer, cold gal up all the welds. And uh, they are pretty rusty, so it's going to take a bit of effort. So, yeah, we'll get into it. All right. So I've started grinding all this down. She's a bit a bit rusty. Yeah, this, this, um, this steel, you can see, 
she's got surface rust but on the top of this stuff it's like got a clear lacquer coating which is absolutely horrible for the flat disc it's even worse for the, the wire wheel you can see where it's gouging the clear off it the clear coated it's supposed to protect the rust but it's got through so I'm not gonna lie this is the suckiest job so far I'm sure there's plenty more to come yeah really sucks balls trying to uh, get all this off so I've got to do it all the way around all on the inside everything so I was gonna film it but yeah it's boring and long and horrible all right this is where we're at so that I uh, probably told you that's all been grinded back and what I've done is just put a brace across here runs across the mud guard so what I'm wanting to do is make a piece that comes from here back to the guard. I've got to cut it on an angle like that. It will come back and then possibly have a brace back to the floor here and weld in. So that can be welded, that can be welded, that can be welded. And same, same up the other end. I'm just not 100% sure yet. I might do it with small tubing here so then I can actually make this as a... Uh, open up and I'll probably cut this piece off and then make it a slide out or just a compartment I think that's probably what I'll do is I'll make it a compartment but so that means I'll have to come from right here straight up to that other piece um, and yeah it's a bit of a schmuzzle I've got a, a broom and a rig just holding it so it's level this way and that's gonna get me upright and then, yeah, we know that one's level. Um, this one is a little bit out of plumb, so once this one's tacked, we can then just adjust. I think that one's going to go back that way just a slight bit and adjust that one so that's straight and then full seam welds. You just tack, tack it like a pretty decent tack. Those ones I'll full weld before, and then we'll just have to weld that one and that one when we uh, go to do it. And, yeah, just same again, just bring that over a bit, tack it so it's straight, and that'll do it. I don't know how much more I'm gonna get done today, and uh, possibly revisit this on Monday, but we'll see. off just a tiny bit more just to get it to sit a bit better uh, but the issue I'm having is this is so thick and wide and I'm not really gonna be able to have access to much stuff here at all I mean I'm gonna I'll cut that lip off and that's only gonna give us maybe that, that 140 mil to get stuff in and out so I don't know whether or not I maybe make this out of smaller tubing which will give me a bit higher clearance. It's probably going to give me, yeah, 170. So I don't know. Or I just stick with it and then box it in. Don't know. Like I said, I'm winging this and making it up as I go, but yeah, we'll see. Um, we'll see what I can come up with. Radio. What I am going to do is, I've got this um, crusty old bit, it's a bit rusty, but I'll have to clean all this up. <clears throat> it's got this um, welded on a bit of angle. So what I'm thinking, is I might turn it this way, do the same shape as that, and that's going to get me up a little bit higher. And because of this angle that's there, I can then mount some hinges on here. I'll cut that out and that'll bring it in a little bit closer too 
So the shawl, I'm gonna end up having this little extra bit, whether I cut that off, I don't know, but I can then sheet that, have a hinged door to get in and out of that stuff there. So that might be better, and same as up the other end. So we might just transfer that cut onto this and then cut that through and just see what she looks like. All right, there you go. So I've cut that one, and that's a lot better. There's a lot more, more room to grab stuff out. Like I said, I'll probably cut this lip off, which would be handy because then I can access this to weld it a bit better. Um, yeah, and having that lip on it now, I can hinge a piece in and out. So, yeah, I've only got like 10, 15 minutes and then I've uh, got to get ready for today. So that'll probably almost be it, but I might see how we go. I might maybe cut the other side out and leave it at that. Tomorrow, I've got a bit of work to do tomorrow, um, helping someone out, doing some painting and stuff at their house. So I can't really get on it, but I really need to get into priming up this before it's exposed for too long so yeah it's gonna have to be tomorrow tomorrow Arvo, i reckon so we'll continue on with this later on but it's looking good i'm happy with how it's gonna be and um it's pretty cool with the design of that tinker cap that i showed you at the start um how it's taken shape and it's looking looking more and more like the actual design which is great and it's just something out of my head that's just um rolled onto this from my imagination to this so it's getting there slowly but uh yeah cool happy with that right this is it for today and we'll come back and get some more so i've got that one just sitting in there roughly and then yep cut that one to shape as well you see this one it's a tiny bit higher just because this mud guard actually drops off a bit so i might have to try and straighten it or just yeah i think i might just leave it anyway won't be too bad i'll fill it in and make it look pretty ish and yeah, that's it. So, yep. Uh, bit of a backup of it now. So, it's coming together slowly. And one day it'll be a camper. But yep, yeah, we'll um, come back. We'll see us tomorrow and we'll uh, get into painting it and doing the rest of the stuff and getting some more work done to it. Okay, so we've got the um, that cold gal held up, and then I welded up the this um, angle just so it's all one piece again, and I grinded that off so we've got a nice flat edge. Um, one thing I was going to find do is cut a bit of tubing and put under there and bring it back down to this angle piece that you see here. Obviously, this tubing has got a bit bigger, so they'll probably maybe have to slot it and well slot it that way and back so it slots all the way down and sits on it. But I don't know if I like it. I am then limited to only having 
this piece here as a, a door and then I'd have to seal that in fully. So I'm thinking I might just run another piece of um, angle, so I'll get this out of the way. <clears throat> get another piece of this, this angle, running a piece down here and welding it onto there and then doing the same here and then probably another piece on the bottom and then my door can flap and go but then that means I get this little bit extra it's not much but yeah it's just a little bit more room where I can grab stuff probably grab stuff from around the court you know and it just gives me that little bit it's either that or like I said I do do that angle piece here and then this can be connectors because our fridge and all that sort of stuff is out here and the fridge is going to slide in and out of here I could make this as a, a panel, switch panel or something for outside. Uh, so I don't know, leave in the comments what you guys think I should do. Should I brace it up here? Maybe it might give us extra support, being it's another one off the body and upright. Um, but I'm sure it's going to have plenty. Or should I do it, angle it down this way and keep this as one full solid door? Um, and then should I put a, yeah, maybe a, some kind of switch, make up a switch panel of some sort that I could flick on, like rock lights or outdoor lights, or just because the door will be open, just have the switch up the top here somewhere where I can just flick it all on. Or it could be water or, you know, something like that. So, yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Alrighty, -o. so this morning I'm down here at um, A1 Salvage and Hardware in Mandra, which is good, good little uh, spot. So this is the second thing I've had to buy so far. I think the first lot of stuff probably only come to like maybe 50 bucks or something. I can't remember because I needed the MIG wire anyway, so I'm not going to count that. But um, yeah, I'm getting some steel tubing and a bit of angle line. So, uh, so far this one was $103 for all the material that I um, have got. It's not even going to do enough, nowhere near, but it's all I can get at the moment with cash wise. So that'll that'll be fine. It'll get me get me a fair way into the project, which is um what I'm looking forward to. So it'll be handy. Um, so yeah, now I've just got to pretty much load it up on the car. So I'm just gonna back it in, we'll chuck it on, go from there. Rightio, I have absolutely no confidence whatsoever as to whether or not that is gonna stay up there. <laughs> so my um normally I would just because I got the roof racks. Normally I would tape it tape it on, and it's just so much easier to get on. But this one, I've just put some uh, ties and strapped it down. But because it's tubing, there's a good chance it could slide out. So if I spear you along the highway, I truly apologise. And uh, yeah, wish me luck. But anyway, uh, we'll go. I've got to go meet up with my mate Wayne, and he's got some um, steel tubing for me, and we're going to tie that to the roof as well. So that should get me a fair way into the product. And so that tubing that Wayne's given me is free. So. Once again, that's a, a bargain. But um, yeah, this one cost me a hundred bucks, just over 103. I'm not too worried. Um, but yeah, I'll give you a rundown later of how much total. I think so far we're we're sitting at about 150, maybe a tiny bit more. But that's not too bad for a uh, camper trailer. It's, that's that's a bonus. It's a bargain. So yep, we'll see you guys uh, soon when we get home. Right, yeah, made it back home without spearing anybody. So here. Got some more of the uh, patio tubing. So these used to be old signs. So very, very handy, apart from all the holes in it, but we'll work it out. Um, also got those two 20 by 20 and they're three meter length tubing. And I got some um, 20 by 20 angle line and they're three meter lengths and I got three of those as well. I've got this um, small sheet of uh, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Just 10 bucks for a little sheet. I want to use that just to do those two little uh, side doors a um, bit of extra gear I've managed to get was these two jury holders and they will mount probably on the front of this somewhere I don't know what that's later I uh, got the solar panel now so that's going to be on this side door as I opened up the solar panel will be on the roof so that'll give us plenty of power for our battery and then we got this picked up this uh, for free as well which is a little just a little tap uh, filter and the non-return um, pressure reducer valve for plumbing so that's going to be just run to a the kitchen sink not to the hot water system but yeah so got everything all set up so what i'm going to do now is maybe just get on to trying to uh, suss out these cut some angle brackets bits and angle for here um to size and maybe make up a frame the actual frame out of the tubing that i've got to um make these two little flaps and i've got some 
hinges somewhere that I can, um, not hinges, the uh, locking mechanisms that will lock it into here and that will do it for there. But yeah, we'll get stuck in it and try and get a bit more done. It's fly out day today, so tomorrow morning I fly out. So I've got to get it a little bit done before my big trip and then won't be here for a couple of weeks. So yeah. Right. Um, I think I might change my plan of attack. I'm going to, I will tackle this. What I'm thinking of doing first is tacking, tacking this frame in, getting that frame leveled up, getting these cross braces tacked on there, welded up. At least if I can get that piece on, I can then take this off, clean this this side off, weld, tack those bits in, and then do the same for that other side. But I want to get this level and everything. At the moment, it's sitting pretty. So I think I might do that first. Just give that side a tack. Level up that side, tack that one in, and then we'll go from there. But yeah, I think I think that's probably going to be the better way to do it. And I'm actually going to do something like this. I'm going to probably just box that section out, and that can be like I said, panels and switches or whatever. But just do that one box. And I shouldn't need to cut that. I probably will. I don't know. We'll see. But that's easy. Just cut it and then cut it and up again. So that gets rid of that piece, just so it can swivel out. But yeah, we'll go ahead and tack this in now. I'll show you when I come back. Right, so I've just created the, the jam bit. So these are these are welded in. They're not very pretty. I've got to clean up the welds and probably re-tack them again. Uh, but yeah, I'm creating this jam out of that angle line. Like I said, the false floor will bolt to that and run all the way to the other side. And it also acts as the jam. So the door comes down and hits here. So picture, I'll be making the, the door tube out of this. And yeah, that'll come down and hit onto there and then yeah sheets can go all the way along here flat flush with this so that won't be too bad That's pretty good Just grind that down but yeah and then all the way through to here and then all I'll do is just make a box channel up along here and all the way down that stupid angle along this piece and then yeah, that will make the door frame and then it's just a matter of putting some braces in between and then making some mounts for the solar panel that will fit on this door perfectly so yeah that'll that'll be what we do so i might zap this angle in and uh clean up some of this welds and touch her up and then that should be it for a bit we'll see if we can get any more done righty -o. it's getting to that point where I'm, my mind's just going all over the place so i'm gonna stop for now that can be video three so it wasn't didn't get a whole heap of stuff done um, but i don't want to rush into it and start doing things and making it all uneven so i figured if i start making up that frame and doing the door and all that sort of stuff uh, without the whole frame being made it may i may come into problems so what i will do is do the whole frame and get it all squared up um, before I attempt to make the doors and all the little bits and same as um same as these little end pieces that I was thinking of doing there with the doors I think I might just leave it to be honest I might just fill them in because I'm gonna have in the bottom with the false floor is I'm gonna have compartments I can lift off and get to access and stuff and we can access through the middle I think that would be the idea is to just have hinges and Piece, like places in there. I mean, I know the fridge is going on this side, but I can access this one easy enough from the back here, but, and same as that one. Um, but yeah, I think I might just have a few hinged doors inside on the false floor, and that way I can access all that stuff underneath, because yeah, it's just become too much of a nightmare. I don't want, really want to take that angle off, because that might um, lessen the structure strength on those out wings on the side, and I don't know, just thought about it a few times and I thought nah it's just I think it might be easier just to box it in close it in um, I could probably revisit it later and whether I do or don't or don't I don't know but anyway that's pretty much it I've sat that other frame up there for now I've got to clean it all and grind it down and shape it the right size that it needs to be and a few other little bits and pieces so that will be when I get back from my fishing trip so before I do leave um, which I won't show you, but this will be the end of the video, but I am going to just clean up my welds that I've done and just touch them up with the cold gal, um, just that way they're not rusting because I won't be 
back at this for another probably two and a half, three weeks. And then, yeah, then it'll be all full steam ahead after my fishing trip. We'll get stuck into it because I'll have actually about two weeks off work um, just to chill at home and do some projects. So this will be um, full steam ahead on this project and try and get it framed and boxed in. So, so yeah, I think I'll, I'll leave it at that for video three. Like I said, it's boring at the start getting into this and just trying to nut it out, um, trying to make it as quick as I can so that way it gives some good content for you guys but at the moment the first three videos are just being cut and grind and painting a little bit of this little bits and pieces but um, towards the end of this series when I'm starting to install solar panels power rooftop tent all the rest of it and then you see it go from a crappy old rusted trailer to um, this U-Butte fingers crossed camper I think yeah it'll be um, a much better content for you guys to watch but anyway hit that like if you are liking the build so far Stick around um, and don't forget to uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, um, go and check out my playlist. And like I said, with that fishing trip coming up, it should be a good one for you guys if you like that sort of stuff. And all my other videos, there's like tons of them on there. So anyway, that'll do for uh, today. So yeah, I'll see you next time. Peace out, stay moist. <laughs>